wasn't my long. So today, now I'm not being biased because of the quarantine 15. I'm just saying, curves are back, baby. Curves are back. And we are here to talk about it today. Um, all different ways you can achieve it, why you want to achieve it, what kind of style it looks perfect with. I am so here for this trend. I, as you can see, have kept my glasses on today because I literally can't see. That's a lie. I can't see. It just hurts a lot. So I've moved the ring light. It's over here. And I'm probably going to film this and then get to edit and go, what have you done? Jack, what have you done? But if you could just forgive me for this one video while I see if it works. Um, so without further ado, today is a matcha kind of day, guys. It's a matcha day. The weather sucks outside. So we're getting cozy with our matcha. So as always, go and get your coffee or your matcha or your tea. Get cozy and let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about curves. It, they're so 80s, aren't they? I remember moving, when I first moved into this house, this house, um, I think it was like an, it was a more elderly couple who owned it before. Um, and the, the 70s and 80s vibe was alive and well in this house. And you know, we're, I think it was 2005 maybe that we moved in. Um, and I remember being like, ew, that has got to go. Like, I really didn't like any of it. Oh. I can't actually silence the, this one today because I'm waiting for a parcel. I'm waiting for a delivery. So, oh, I'm gonna, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will silence it, but I'll put it on me. No, I'll put it right in front of me there. Problem solved. Yeah, so, I really was not a fan of anything 80s. We had like coloured glass, like yellow glass up on the landing stairs um, and just like archways and just, <laughs> I remember walking in thinking, no, no. Paint everything grey, we want it all grey and straight lines and marble. But you know, that was the thing then, that was okay, that's how it was then. And as a lot of the time, when you have uh, a trend, a style and aesthetic that is fantastic, it always comes back around. A bit like flares, you know, they're never going away. They'll go away for a bit, but they'll always come back. Oh, they're a bit like kids. <laughs> Get rid of them for a bit, they always come back. Um, so, that's what's happening here. That is what is happening in a big way with curves. We find curves in furniture, on walls, in art, in the shapes of the walls. <laughs> Try not to give too much away, but I'm sure you know what I'm saying. It's just it, there's so much there's so much you can do when you look beyond straight lines. There's so much and in in mine and our at Nook and Fans opinion, um, caves the, they, they add a lot more character to any space. So if you've got a space that is say a rented space or it's a new build, new builds are um, well known for being. This is no shade on new builds because I, I've seen Home of Sade has done amazing things with her new build. It is phenomenal but a lot of new builds can look quite boxy and samey samey in each one and it's just about finding ways around that and um, if you have a rental you can easily find ways around that as well so <sighs> caves are a lot more inviting and relaxing and did I say feminine but not in the kind of way that like a man couldn't like claim the space because it's feminine in the ways that it's gentle and gentle and relaxed starts guys um so it's just it's just such a lovely lovely style that 
Um, I'm getting sick of it to be honest with you because every time I look at, I mean it is kind of mid-century modern so I don't need to worry about that, um, but every time I look at a trend I think oh whole house is getting done, whole house and I just need to, I need to not do this, I, oh, I just I want it everywhere. <laughs> I want kids, I want archways, I want colour blocking everywhere, I want it all. Um, but there's ways to work that into all styles as well, and that's well most styles, and that's the thing about that's the thing about caves that I really like. You can you can put that, you can work it into most style aesthetics and soften the look of the aesthetic. I mean a lot of a lot like Scandi is beautiful it's a beautiful style it doesn't it's not sometimes it can come off a bit cold because of the very light bright uh neutral tones that it involves but not if you do it right it doesn't have to but certainly adding um curves into a scandy style would definitely warm that right up um japandi as well japandi is ex I would say it's exactly the same and other than mid-century modern I, I don't see where chaos would fit in better Japandi would just it just top it right off if you ask me um but most most design aesthetics could could handle caves and you know balance everything out in a beautiful beautiful way so one of the most obvious ways to get curved lines into your home specifically a living room would be seating now curved sofas are absolutely stunning there are some absolutely stunning pieces out on the market and they are not super super expensive i mean i think i seen one that's traditional to the i think it was the 80s it could have been late 70s i actually cannot remember the name of it now but i think it started at 15 grand um something like that and these are maybe 1800s less even um so i would i would highly suggest like having a good look this one from made.com is absolutely beautiful priced at £1,199 and you can just see I mean it's got the boucle it's got the caves hey, what hasn't it got guys what hasn't it got you tell me there's also plenty of armchairs made again is really good for armchairs have a look at the cooper the trudy both absolutely beautiful by the way everything will be linked below as per usual um so if you want to check them out just head down to the links below or also go over to our blog at www.nothingfind.co.uk or .com I can say that now and it will go there <laughs> now the point of the curved furniture specifically the curved sofa is to obviously everything I've said feminine lines more inviting more relaxing but also it was um back in the 80s it was known as the conversational sofa and that's because the way it's shaped it's not like everybody's sitting along the couch and and you've got to do all this everybody is like oh hey how you doing everybody's like just there and you can have a conversation i read that there was one um interior designer unfortunately the name escapes me right now but there was one interior designer who could not stand like when every when the space was complete and everything was looking absolutely stunning she loved it and then everyone sat down and there was just legs legs everywhere clutters of legs and she hated it so she created a curved sofa and it was all mismatched and beautiful a beautiful thing to behold and I just thought to myself it's it's a little bit it's interesting isn't it how I, that would never have occurred to me oh it looks lovely when it's done but you stick humans there and the legs are unsightly that wouldn't have occurred to me but it's nice to see that there's always ways there's way it, like if you've got the tiniest little thing that's irritating to you there's a way around it and sometimes a curve is the way to go 
that's what I'm telling myself after the lockdown anyway. The only thing I would say when you go for the curved sofa or like a statement armchair is that's your statement. <laughs> I'm losing the name. Um, so try to stay away from big statements elsewhere. I'm not saying you can't have lovely, beautiful pieces that are eye-catching, but you don't want these pieces fighting with each other. A gorgeous curved sofa is a beautiful design and, and that's where the eye is going to go. So everything else that goes in here should be a complement to it. So whereas you would maybe want a... Is it a poo? Because I've said this before, I'm Scouse and we say puffy. What are you going to do? But I believe it might be a poof. <laughs> I'm going to look stupid here, aren't I? But I don't care. Poof forward slash puffy. <laughs> oh no. Anyway, if you were to get that and, and, and it wasn't the exact right shape or it was not the exact right size, it would be competing with your sofa. So you have to be really careful about what, what goes with such a lovely statement piece. So I'm in love with these coffee tables. There's one from the Any Day range, which we spoke about last week. And then another one from John Lewis, but not the Any Day range, is the Grayson coffee table. Oh, this is a mid-century dream. This is absolutely beautiful. It's everything you want from a mid-century, curved, beautiful lines coffee table. You couldn't ask for more. You couldn't ask for more. And it comes in two colours. It comes in a dark colour and an oak colour. So, you really couldn't ask for more. And then this gorgeous recap walnut coffee table, again from John Lewis. I can't decide now, because these are both mid-century dreams. I suppose it depends on the size of your sofa, which one you go for, but these are both absolutely beautiful and you, like, take your pick, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with either of these. Lead from your sofa and then pick the table, depending on that, because I can't, I can't decide. So next would be lighting. Now, with lighting, it's, you can either get, like, a statement pendant light like the penny light from made.com that's beautiful or the tox walking on or you can go for something a little bit more subtle um, and have lamps around or even um, a standard lamp that would look really floor lamp standard lamp floor lamp that would look really nice as well there's some really gorgeous options for floor lamps and table lamps and they will set the place off they will add they won't take over they will add and it will just look absolutely stunning have a quick look at this gorgeous collection of lamps and floor lamps they're absolutely stunning and like i said they will not take over they'll complement they add they'll give subtle hints of caves just perfect just beautiful okay and one of my favorite parts is embellishing the area with ornaments and i am so here for the retro vibe there's this eggplant vase from harvey nicks oh, oh, oh i will fight you for it i've said this before over on instagram at no um i'll fight you for it it's absolutely gorgeous and when i get my mid-century curvy dream room i don't know which room i'm going to pick yet but when i get that you best believe that eggplant vase is going to be in there I mean, how funny is it that it's called an eggplant vase, but to us it'd be an aubergine vase. <laughs> I'll fight you for the aubergine vase. How about that? But also, have a look at 
this tortoise shell vase from Oka. It's gorgeous. It's so, it's retro. It fits in with this vibe absolutely perfectly. It's just chef's kiss. And then again from Harvey Nicks, this Your Tube vase. I have something similar. It wasn't from Harvey Nicks in my um, in in my porch area, and it's I'm not gonna lie, it, it's hard to use it as a vase, but on its own as a statement, it's just lovely. It's just so different, and it it's one of them pieces that everyone looks at it and they're like, what's that? But it looks gorgeous. It's like a conversation starter. That's what it is. It's a conversation starter. So they don't say, I Jack, as the entering my home, they go, hey, what's that? And I go, well, since I am the um, authority on interiors, let me tell you. I don't really, they laugh at me if I said that. Because my support system is me. You know who you are. Um, I also love the prickle ornament from John Lewis. I've been looking at this for absolutely ages and I didn't want to purchase it until I knew where it was going to go and I still haven't purchased it because I still haven't decided. But it's so beautiful. Again, a statement. It, it just sits there and it just does all the talking for you and it fits perfectly in. Definitely mid-century, Japandi. Um, in fact, it's going there. Anything? Maybe, maybe not farmhouse or boho probably wouldn't fit in there but you you get me just you get what i'm saying and then again from john lewis these maya i think you say maya beards are beautiful and they remind me of when i used to go to my grand's house she used to have royal dalton everywhere and these are like them 80s like i don't know what i don't know mm almost like marble you remember you used to get paperweights like them and i can't remember what the design's called but the set well i'm going to show you now they're so lovely and they fit in again so perfectly i mean obviously they do because why would i be showing you them it's a fun way to add color playfulness caves to your space it's beautiful how many times do I say it's beautiful? And then finally, I wanted to touch on colour because colour, a lot of the times, um, especially where we're going to use nice, bright accents, uh, maybe sofas, fab soft fabrics, or the accents, we have I said the accents, or the ornaments and such, we go with a more neutral wall paint which is beautiful and will fit in lovely. But one of the things I like, and I've, do you know what, I'm not brave enough. I might do, I might, we'll see. But it's colour blocking, I absolutely love it. I've seen people do the most magical thing with colour blocking. I've seen one where they just put a massive circle. Just, that's it, just a circle. And it was a really vibrant colour. So everywhere else is nice and neutral and then there's just a big circle or you can put squares, rectangles, you can do what you want. A lot of people are painting arches, um, you know, to save from having to build an arch. People are painting arches to give the vibe. Um, and I absolutely love it, you know, it looks so nice. Um, also, if you are renting a space, colour blocking can really make it your own and it's fine because you can paint over it. Um, so, I, I would seriously consider thinking about colour blocking. In, in terms of neutral paint, the Ochre's paint range that's come out is absolutely stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. There's this one called Smock. And then there's this one called Kelm's Cock. absolutely stunning neutral base you cannot go wrong with these colors and then from dulux i am in love with mulberry blast and basically black for color blocking or i've seen people actually where there is an archway paint inside the archway just as an accent oh stunning um do you know who i did see do it oh my god what's her name i can't remember her name right now 
Pretty in the Pines. That's what she's called on Instagram, actually. I don't think she's called that on YouTube, but I'll find out and I'll link it below because she's a renter and she does a lot of things like that and she documents the whole lot of it. So I think you'd really enjoy that if if renting and making it your own is something that you'd be interested in. You'd really like her YouTube and her Instagram. It's really nice and she's so imaginative. I mean, I'm saying she, I'm sure her partner is also in on it, uh, but he doesn't, he doesn't appear that much that I could confidently sit here and say that if you catch me drift. So what did you think guys? Did you like it? Because I loved it and I, like I'm getting so inspired, but I do say this every single, every single week. So I need to like really hone down, but there's two things that have never changed in all the time that I've been doing interiors and that is my love for mid-century I, I i just if i can put it everywhere i would i mean i can i can put it everywhere and that's the thing i need to wrap my head around the husband is near right now and he's definitely not into the mid-century vibe i plan on getting loads of mood boards together so that when he does finally get home i can convince him i can be no but He, he, his aesthetic is a lot different than mine. I won't go into it, but it's very different than mine. He's like a magpie. If it's shiny, he's like, ooh. Shiny stuff. Stop it, give you shiny stuff, will ya? Unless I'm wearing it around my neck or on my hands. I think that's shiny stuff. Um. So yeah, I plan on getting mid-century boards together for him and I might throw in some colour blocking on there because that's the kind of thing he'd like. It's a challenge to make the lines absolutely perfect. Um, and that's it. One of my favourite sayings is, oh, I'll do, I'll do. And he's not like that at all. It would have to be perfection. So I'm excited to try that with him. Um, but I really love this trend. Like I said, um, I guess... Sort of, you know, hindsight is, what's that phrase? Whatever, you know, you look back and you think, oh, why did I get rid of all them gorgeous original features? This was back then when I didn't know anything. I didn't know nothing, to be honest. So yeah, I absolutely love this trend in a nutshell. I'm here for this trend. I, um, I'd love to hear your opinions because I know with stuff like this, it can be it can, it can be a great idea when it's an idea and then you put it into practice and you're like, oh. Um, and I'd love to hear your experiences with it. Have you ever colour blocked before? Have you took the plunge and got a curved sofa instead of the safe, traditional shaped sofas? Because if you have, I'd really look, tag, nook and find and let us see what you've done because just, oh, bravo, bravo. <laughs> um, so that's it from me guys if you would like any more information please head over to our blog at www.nookandfind.co.uk or .com and um, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and please do subscribe and ring the bell it helps us out so very much um until next thursday guys see you soon bye